Hi everyone, I am Professor Ng, currently teaching at the Bartlett School of Architecture, UCL. Today, I will be discussing with you 21E8 as a means of coupling BIM, blockchain, and GANs. The ability of GANs to synthesize large sets of data is ideal for coupling with BIM to formulate a multi-access system that enables users to search and browse through a spectrum of articulated options, all personalized to design specificity, a form of architecture machine. Nonetheless, due to challenges in proprietary incompatibility, BIM systems currently lack a secured yet transparent way of freely integrating with crowdsourced efforts. This research proposes to employ blockchain as a means to couple GANs and BIM, with 21E8 as a networking strategy to facilitate data communication and distribution. And ask the question, what are the roles of these technologies when integrated within a system? What are the challenges for such a system to be multi-access? And how might a 21E8 strategy help in tackling these challenges? This research positions blockchain as a universal protocol that facilitates transparency in information exchange by enabling immutability through timestamp functions. Basically, you can have a distributed ledger which records all transactions that no one can alter. This answers the challenges in architectural production in terms of intellectual properties, IPs. The conventional problem with exchanging IP is that once you broadcast the IP, it becomes insecure, in a sense that someone might steal your idea. Blockchain offers a way where you can realize the value in your IP immediately, for instance, in forms of tokens, so designers can be more willing to contribute their work in a common data environment. This technology might help to transform architecture production in that values are not only subject to be realized once you have built the project, but you might realize the value at various stages of design development. This not only has prospects in relieving the heavy debt symptoms within the architectural supply chain, also it goes along with emerging trends in speculative design where IPs are not merely attending to beautiful ones. In short, this provides alternatives to conventional copyright systems, which doesn't really work well in architectural production, to a form of copyleft system where IPs are shared, but values can be directed back to content contributors accordingly. That being said, accessibility in terms of user interaction with the system is a major concern. Interfacing communication is where BIM is positioned, not only as a software, but as an interface to access a common data environment. BIM is currently more oriented to construction, targeting information mainly of building elements, costs, operational data, and so on. Yet, we're witnessing many enterprise-grade attempts at utilizing APIs in breaching different data environments to provide real-time updates in multi-user content creation including NVIDIA's Omniverse, which facilitates real-time communication of 3D data between different modeling softwares. The argument here is that BIM should not stay as a rigid software, but different interface strategies, not only between humans, but also between machines. In that sense, BIM's common data environment is perfect to be coupled with blockchain, where the former facilitates user-to-interface communication and the latter enables address-to-cloud layers deployment. The other concern is the understanding of the various formats and layers of data input-output. As mentioned, construction data types don't usually fit emerging projects with speculative designs or work in progress, which more than often concerns algorithm or data set design and so on. Especially in the face of AI, we should perhaps consider architectural information not as final products, but as compute services. Currently, there are no means of indexing data beyond building elements and such within BIM. If we look at advancement in AI, both in rule-based and machine learning systems, the most valuable information is usually not in the final work, but the algorithms, the variables, the data set themselves. Meaning, if we wish to build AI into BIM systems, we have to figure out A, a means to build AI into the system as various compute services. B, a means to index information content beyond conventional construction data types. This actually taps into the challenges of bridging between proprietary and crowdsourced efforts. Currently, proprietary BIM softwares authenticate useful algorithms and build them into the system. 
whereas crowdsourced communities publish their codes on platforms like GitHub for nonprofit purposes. The former assures enterprise great quality, but users have little to no control over services and pricing. The latter provides autonomy of use and continuous updates with little to no assurance over quality. For an architecture machine to enjoy the benefits from both sides, crowdsourced content has to have a means to be ranked collectively, a form of consensus mechanism for decentralized quality assurance. The question of indexing is actually at the core if we imagine a distributed or a decentralized information system where everyone can contribute, how can we validate work, prevent spam, and information overload? We wouldn't want a BIM software with a thousand unranked AI algorithms in it, which only creates confusion for users. That something search engines like Google are tackling with their search index, how to push the best results at the top when a user sends a query to search. But Google is a proprietary index. Our goal is to decentralize. This research proposes a 21E8 strategy, where 21 million is the maximum number of blocks a network can mine. So it represents the networking protocols that secure system sustainability, efficiency, and scalability. E8, in mathematical terms, is a lattice that is highly symmetrical and compact. It can assist data control and communication in that it can act as a datum to evaluate data Together, 21E8 is the notion of decentralized search index as a means not only to self-organize crowdsourced efforts, but also to validate work and direct values back to content contributors. Moving on from the system design, now let's take a look at an example of a combinatorial pipeline such a system may enable. I'm going to show a set of preliminary results using GANs and E8. They aim at illustrating two things. First, how E8 can be used as a datum to evaluate data. Second, what are the forms of data input output we should consider in terms of crowd indexing for AI? The first is a style transfer GAN, which is a form of AI image processing. It was used to visualize network density in existing urban fabric, at the same time as a cost-effective means to reimagine how the urban fabric can be interfaced according to its network. As you can see on the right is the Hong Kong SAR government plan for revitalization project in Hong Shui Kiu, an area full of brownfields. So the government strategy focuses mainly on dissecting the land in terms of function and tender out these sites to developers. Whereas output from GANs is less focused on functional zoning, but more in terms of transit and networking between dense areas which we can call nodes or hubs, so that it's perfect for transit-oriented developments. Current conditions of Hong Shui Kiu sites are scattered and fragmented with a highway segregating the urban fabric into two halves. The reconfigurations were done using GANs and E8 topology, where E8 act as a datum to highlight existing hubs and reconfigure the urban fabric by weaving in more connections between these hubs. So every node is a maximum connection with its neighbors without overloading the site with too many fragments. We can see this as a minimax strategy. The earth view visualization was done again using style transfer and data from local urban texture maps. Within such a pipeline, E8 is a datum for evaluation. GANs expand on options rather than providing singular solutions. And it is the architect's job as a designer to rationalize this data for implementation, formulating one of the many possibilities of human machine interaction pipelines. From these, we can briefly identify the information needed to be ranked, which includes data on existing condition of the fabric, crowdsourced data from local occupants, various topologies which act as datum, various style transfer algorithms, which includes not only the algorithm itself, but style data and form data. So that points to training data sets, which includes the above mentioned, plus texture mapping and so on. But most importantly, how can we collectively agree on the values of these data inputs so we can have a sort of proof of concept mechanism for various data types where users can assess the visibility of these crowdsourced content? 
in terms of real-time visualization for multi-party content creation, a second set of tests was carried out using GANs, picks to picks The pipeline proposed a means to visualize 2D information in 3D video walkthrough with very little time, approximately compressing work that would take days into just hours. Well, of course, one immediate shortcoming you can see is the low resolution of the output. So the research is currently experimenting with other cost-effective means to enhance the resolution, which ultimately would depend on how much data and computational power we can crowdsource. Another shortcoming is that the current pix to pix is a supervised learning, meaning someone has to semantically label the data set in colors. In the next five to 10 years, if this problem isn't tackled, we might be having interns who no longer clean up BIM models, instead be semantically labeling all the buildings in a data set. So these actually points to another significance of 21E8 in terms of decentralized indexing and its relationship to automation. As in a BIM system, someone would have to label all the building elements. Is there a way we can crowdsource efforts with a universal index where instead of having interns to do this boring and repetitive work, we all contribute some computation power or data within a network and collectively train up some machine vision on the universal index to automate such work? The proposed combinatorial pipeline basically illustrates a very preliminary scope to which BIM has to comprehend to diversify and benefit user interaction in the face of AI. At the same time, what does it actually take to formulate a multi-access system that is socially and economically inclusive to users of various computational and financial capacity? Here is a summary diagram of how various users can potentially interact with such a system. This is an ongoing project with more research, tests, and papers coming out soon. If you wish to collaborate, contribute, or just to discuss and update yourself with the ongoings, make sure you follow my Instagram, YouTube, and ResearchGate. You can find me either at Provise mm or at Provise.ism. A few key points to take away, in which I have decided to share some further questions to ask. How can BIM comprehend more forms of compute surfaces so it is not just building information modeling, but truly architectural information modeling? How can the currently proprietary dominated markets be inclusive to crowdsource efforts, both socially and economically, where such urgency is increasingly highlighted by the advancement in AI, which are mostly open source algorithms? In face of a decentralization trend, what kind of changes in architectural production would such a multi-access system stimulate? How would we progress from a linear architectural supply chain that consists of large sums of upfront capital to other forms of crowdfunding models or reverse auctions that may help to secure value flow for smaller actors? Last but not least, how do we outsource work within a distributed network of humans and machines where each is better at different tasks? And how do we direct values to those who did useful work? At the same time, distribution would still require a sense of centrality where there is a directional force to which we collectively advance towards. How may decentralized indexing help us inform a consensus around information objects and collectively achieve larger, more complex tasks like collectively training machines to see and understand semantics? Above all, we would have to understand what tasks, what data production, and what compute services are there to be automated, and distribute work amongst a network of humans and machines accordingly. Thank you so much for your attention. See you in the Q&A.